But I will say that I did not see you there. Wow. It and, is and, I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I take offense to you making the remark that says, I lie. And because I am, I do represent the church, and I would rather do anything but lie. Okay, specifically holding the title of, of a reverend. Now, if you were there, I, I stand corrected, but I'm saying that I personally did not see you there. I don't mean to insinuate in any way that you're lying. All I'm simply saying is that and I'm not you are mistaken. With her All I'm saying is else. that you are mistaken in terms of what you presented to the people in Plainfield, and you should have your facts correct before you put misstatements out there. There are hundreds of people who know that I was there because they saw me speaking from the podium. I was on News 12, which was a recorded segment of the rally in Trenton on that on that Saturday. And so let's be factual. Let's try to address the concerns about the city of Plainfield and not as attempt to get personal and, you know, conduct a vendetta against anyone sitting there at this table. Let us deal with the issues that are facing Plainfield today. Let us try to talk about the solutions, which I have solutions along with Annie McWilliams to address the many concerns and issues that are facing this great city. The, the problems are many and you need people that are going to bring about the solutions to those problems. I guess that as a um, the specific question to you that um, a number of people in our own neighborhood, Van Wyck Brooks, um, are, were very disappointed and discontented with your performance when we faced the Abbott Manor issue. Um, and you refused to step up and help us with that fight. It ended up the citizens had to go to court, pay our own monies to win that battle. And, you know, the, the Myself, as a citizen, you know, you expect your council person, you expect your freeholder who lives in the same neighborhood facing a monstrosity that, that was and that we did defeat in court. It kind of looks like, you know, you didn't want to get involved because it was too controversial or, you know, I mean, I guess the question I just have is, you know, why didn't you step up then when citizens very clearly asked you to help us out with a major issue? Again, it's a falsehood that you're trying to perpetrate upon the people of the Third Ward and the city of Plainfield. I was there for Abbott. I spoke up very vociferously. I was at the council meetings. I participated. And so I was there lending my support to the entire city of Plainfield, to the people of the Third Ward, working against the Abbott Manor so that it would not be there. And so I don't understand why you would try to mislead and misrepresent to the community of Plainfield. Well, you clearly are misinformed. No, you don't I, have Adrian, your facts. I was on the zoning board facts. at the time, and I, I knew And that you that should have seen me speaking before the zoning board, if you were there. Uh, no, I never saw you speak. Okay, I'm going to go to a call. We have a call coming in. Yes, well, Annie, we're on to five, so that's good. So go ahead. <laughs> I guess that's directed to you, Al. Yeah, you know, Adrian, I, I guess the thing is is that if Don Davis were sitting here in this room, believe me, I would have some choice things to say to him as, in his performance. But given that Adrian at one time was a council person and was a freeholder, you and know, represented I represented the people very well, and they've said that, they know that. It's just, I, I'm just bringing up something that a number of people and, you know, in, in the district were very disappointed that Adrian, they felt, did not step up and fight for us for that, you know, for Abbott Matter, that we had to end up doing it ourselves. And I guess the other thing that what I'm, I'm not attacking Adrian saying, you know, he is a citizen, I'm a citizen, but I think what people should look at is that if you're going to elect someone who is not on council, then you want to look for leadership. You want to look for someone who is involved and can show results. I think that's that's basically all my yes, point yes, is. Yes. So the, the thing that is that the comments that you made about what you've been doing at this higher level, 
That's fine and well, but how does that save Muhlenberg? How does that specifically, at this moment in time, on June 15th, keep Solaris from shutting Muhlenberg down? I mean, I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with at those higher level issues being resolved. I've had people come to me, oh, we should get the, you know, the government to quit war so that they can put money into health care. That's a true statement, but how does that save Muhlenberg right this moment? And I think the thing is, is that it's just a matter that what, what you outlined is too high of a level and not addressing a solution at a very specific level for the hospital. Okay, uh, we're going to go to a break and we'll be back, Adrian, when we come back from break. Okay. <laughs> We can talk. We can talk about other things. Well, you know, I want to jump in, but I really hospital. hope we because, can. Yeah, because, because I'm not a candidate. That's right. Yeah, and uh, I'd rather right. give the time. Right, right, sure, right. Sure, sure. Yeah, but we can talk about other stuff. If you want to do um, youth, if you want to do economic development, you know, we can talk about get off of Muhlenberg. Yeah. We spent okay. a half an hour on it. It's happening Thursday, May 29th at the Elegant School One Supper Club in Inglewood, New Jersey. The Culture Zone will include information, a chance to network with others, delicious eating, and of course, dancing. It's wholesome fun for adults, and you can even bring your teenage kids, too. I'll be your host, so come on out and enjoy the good times at the Culture Zone. It's taking place Thursday, May 29th at 7 p.m. at the Elegant Zone One Supper Club. Yes, he's the former assemblyman, yeah. He's fine. He lives in Florida. And and he has a, a he has a consulting company and specializes in redevelopment of hospitals. Oh, okay, well, all right. All right. So he's we had a meeting with him this morning. Yeah. yeah. Well, Carmen came and, and Steve was there. And, you know, I mean, so we were there to help. Oh, yeah. 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 There's a bargain. Yeah, SRX, CTS, DTS. Okay. And if you hurry, Crown has a limited amount of new DTS models with savings up to fifteen thousand dollars. Crown is the oh, number one certified pre owned Cadillac dealer in the Northeast. And don't okay. stay okay. away because the credit yeah, worries credit is no problem. Yeah. Our credit specialists will consider all applications. So what are you waiting for? The gas and go sale and our sign and drive event, plus our extensive selection of certified pre owned Cadillacs at Crown Cadillac, Route 22 East in Watchung, New Jersey. Call 800 881 3750. That's 800-881-3750. Cadillac, life, liberty, and the pursuit. Hey, this is it. McDonald's Gospel Fest 2008. The biggest gospel event of the year, starring Kurt Franklin, Vicky Minus, the mighty clouds of joy. Oh, hey, man, I, stand, I do stand correctly. I, I was there. I just don't remember seeing it. I'm so disappointed, Reverend Brown, that you would even go out on a line like that. Then you don't have the fact of the point. You should know better than that. You guys know that y'all got it. It's still on tape. tape. It's it's still on tape. <laughs> this thing is still rolling. You should know better than that. It's still rolling now. This tape here is still rolling. But the second bus ride, you weren't there. And I said I was not. Yeah. Okay, I said I was not. So and, 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 and I don't remember seeing you the first bus ride. Right. Right. So, 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 so how are you still rolling? Because it was beautiful. That's what I'm saying. Okay, but just saying everything he said basically is like. Yeah, you're saying you're saying that I made I was disappointed. He made me disappointed. Okay, because see, I'm I'm like anybody else. These guys are the only perfect person. I am subject to make a mistake. If you were not there, then I, if you were there, then I am mistaken. But I said I didn't see you. The first trip, Reverend Brown, had over 10 buses. Okay. The did, second trip had only two buses. Did you hear me so speak? Obviously did you hear me speak? I was not there on the second the ride. Trip. I don't remember all of the people who okay. spoke on the first okay. ride. Okay, just like so I, I don't remember so you I speak. Would, I would never make that statement. Well, you just made it. You just... Okay, we're back. This is Town Talker. We've been extended a half an hour. Again, we have Adrian Mapp here and Olive Lynch. And I think uh, we, we left on commercial with, with Olive Lynch and her word and toward you, Adrian. Yes. Uh, you, I guess you would like to respond. 
I am not going to stoop to any personal attacks. I want to keep it factual. I want to keep it real. And my only agenda is the agenda for Plainfield. And I am running against an incumbent candidate mm -hmm. who has not delivered services to the city of Plainfield. This incumbent candidate has been conducting himself in a manner that is really resulting in taxes being driven up higher than the people's ability to afford and to pay. He has been chastised by his colleagues on the council for his wasteful spending on trips that he has taken to Atlantic City, socializing and fraternizing with his friends, and his colleagues chastise him for his wasteful spending habits. The incumbent has also allowed a former cabinet member to abscond with over $150,000 of contracts that were awarded without the consent or without a resolution of the governing body. Also, there has been monies misappropriated in the tax collector's office at City Hall, and the incumbent has not carried out his fiduciary responsibility to hold accountable the administration. Our streets are in a state of decay. They've fallen apart. And in the last year that I served on the council, we put in place a road repaving and resurfacing program that has been abandoned, literally abandoned, by my opponent and by the administration. I must also say that my opponent has been complicit in the personal vendetta that led to the removal of the chief of police position, making it virtually impossible for any of Plainfield's finest to ever rise to the position of police chief. And so these are so many things that he has done that really shows that he is not working in the interest of Plainfield. He is the liaison to the Board of Education, and his behavior is really really a disservice to our young people. Okay, okay, Adrian, Adrian, I don't mean to cut you off, but you, uh, you know, Churchill was happening now. We normally don't take a position on who's who we here just to serve the community. But since you have went this far, I need you to tell the community who is this person you talk about. This person is the incumbent, Don Davis, who every home that I have gone to, every door <coughs> I have knocked on, they have told me they don't know who their council person is, because he's not out there in the community, he's not delivering the services, and so that is the person that the people want replaced, and they want leadership, they want leadership that will come from Adrian Mapp and Annie McWilliams, they want the ideas that we are proposing, and they want us to bring about change to the council, it cannot be business as usual, same old, same old, no, we want change. That's what the people have told us, and that's what Annie McWilliams and I will bring to the city council. And I ask the people on June 3rd to vote in the affirmative, 6E for Annie McWilliams and 7E for Adrian Mapp, and don't fall for the deliberate attempt on the part of the Union County clerk to mislead the voters of the city of Plainfield by placing another candidate in the same column as Annie McWilliams and myself. This is the first time in the history of electoral politics that opponents have been placed in the same column. And this is an attempt to deceive the people of Plainfield. It was done deliberately by Jerry Green and the people that he reported in Union County. And so I ask the people of Plainfield not to fall for the okie doke and look carefully when you go to the polls, column E, 6E, and 7E. Annie McWilliams and Adrian Mapp. Okay, I just want to say this right here, that we, we were in contact with uh, with Davis. Uh, we seen, uh, we, we, uh, at the NACP meeting, he was there, and at the forum at Washington School, and also we seen him the other night at um, at the library. And, right. and so uh, I, I guess... And he's been given an opportunity to appear on this station, I'm sure. Yes, yes, he, was, uh, he should have came today, but he... Uh, uh, other uh, things uh, left a note. But let me say this right here, and I'm going to say to the public that if those politicians are out there that you name, because the church of what's happening now, we don't take any part. Have them call in. Call in now. Right now we have Annie Mac Williams on the line.
Annie? Okay, okay, she, she's not here. So we're gonna go to Brenda Gilbert. As a resident of this city, I've sat here and listened to a whole lot of stuff. And I wanna say to the residents, we haven't had any good politicians before, during, or after in quite a while. Now folks can sit up here and make all kinds of assertions, but they ain't been no better than the rest of them. Hey, amen. Oh, I'm going to call it the way it is now. Amen. And I ain't for nobody, and I ain't in between nobody, and I don't owe nobody nothing. That's right. And I ain't asking for nobody for nothing. So I'm going to say to the citizens, really and truly, look at these candidates. Okay, okay. Okay, and okay. see what they have to offer. I want you to hold on to the mic. We have Annie Mac Williams called. Sure. Just call okay. Annie? Yes, I'm here. Okay, go ahead. Okay, Annie, did you hear what Adrian Mapp said about the, uh, uh, those that's on, on the city council? I may have missed that. Okay, okay. Would you like to repeat it? I basically said to the people of, of um, I basically said to the people of Plainfield that the incumbent has been participatory in the mismanagement that is going on at City Hall, that he has been responsible for wasteful spending of taxpayers' money by fraternizing and socializing with his friends in Atlantic City and that he has been chastised by his colleagues on the council. I talked about a former employee who has absconded with over $150,000 of an unauthorized contract that was awarded to himself. I talked about how the, the sitting council members have allowed funds to be mis misappropriated in the tax collector's office without holding the guilty parties accountable. I've also talked about the way the road program has been abandoned and that our streets are in a state of disrepair. And as we drive through the city and as we go to homes in the city, the constant complaint that we keep hearing is that our roads are horrendous. I also talked about his complicity in the vendetta that was that led to the removal of the chief of police position, thus making it impossible for any member of Plainfield's finest to ever rise to the rank of police chief. I also talk about his behavior. Now, he is the liaison to the Board of Education. And we must make sure that our behavior is such that those young people who we are trying to influence and mentor will use our behavior as a model. And so my opponent's behavior lately has really resulted in him being anything but an example for our young people. I also talked about the tax collection rate. People are complaining about taxes. The tax collection rate has been down for the past two years. And there is an inverse relationship between your tax collection rate and the taxes that you pay. As the tax collection rate goes down, property taxes go up. And so people have been complaining about the taxes. And that is because of a lack of accountability on the part of the members of the governing body refusing to hold the administration accountable. But what saddens me is something that was sent out today. People attacking a young person like Annie McWilliams. And what kind of a message is that sending to our young people? We ought to be encouraging our young people to get involved in the process and to beat up on a young person who is well-educated, who has ideas and a lot of energy to Agent, bring. Agent, who is, is attacking? Who, who this is, attacking? is a flyer that is being sent out by the opposition, the assemblyman boasted at a forum a couple nights ago that he has spent over $200,000 of his own money. So this is a flyer that was delivered to people's mailboxes today attacking Annie McWilliams. 
indicating that she never attended the Plainfield Public School System, and that is a lie. She went to the Plainfield Public School System. As a matter of fact, I've had a number of teachers and people I went to school that I finished the sixth grade with who have contacted me to express their support. Okay, so do you uh, support what Adrian Mapp said uh, just just a minute ago? Yes, I mean, this is why I wanted to get involved. This is why Adrian Mapp is bringing all of his experience back to Plainfield. We have failed leadership. We have people who are in the position to do everything that's right for Plainfield, to lead us to a better place, and that has not happened. And so you believe that we have the um, wrong people in the right positions? Okay, if you can ho hold on to, uh, uh, hang on a little while, sure. we're going to have uh, Reverend Branch, he has something to say. My question is for Adrian Matt. Adrian. Yes, Reverend Branch. Did you used to hold, hold a uh, city council position in the city of Plainfield? That is correct. You, people voted you in, right? That is correct. People also voted you out. Why? That is correct. Why? Why didn't you say that was correct? Okay, because see, what happened was you got in, and just like other people, other politicians who you happen to be talking badly about right now, but see, we I want the people to understand that you are also a politician that was elected into an office that people felt that you weren't doing your job, and then they voted you out. See, the beautiful thing about the election policy is that we can vote you in and we can vote you out. Now, just like you're sitting back talking about other politicians here now, okay, and see, like I said, I'm I'm I am not on either any agenda. I am a Is civil right? rights I'm a civil rights advocate. Okay. I am out for people's rights. Okay. And, you don't have and, agenda. and no I don't have agenda. No, I do not have agenda. I am not for Jerry Green. I'm not for nobody here. Okay. Or no none of the people that you're running against. My I'm for the people. Okay. And and that's why I am civil rights advocate for the NAACP right now. Okay. Because I fight for people's rights. And the fact of the matter is that you were voted in and you were voted out. You also went to city council, I mean to to um to Union County, okay, um, as a freehold and got voted in and got voted out. Again, Why? Now, again, you, I mean, you talking all this junk I'll about other people. I'll respond, Reverend Branch. I'll, I'll respond, Reverend Branch. Again, it is quite clear that you came here with an agenda. And I came here to participate in a forum with um, Olive Lynch, and I thought it would have been Don Davis. But it is quite clear that you are here with an agenda. It is quite clear that you don't know your facts. I ran and was elected twice to the position of second and third at-large council person by a more than a two-to-one majority. I was never voted off the council in Plainfield. I resigned. Get your facts straight. Right. You are ill-informed okay. and you are doing a disservice so then, to the people so you, you claim you, you advocate so you quit your job. So you then. should quit Although, now. Otherwise, you quit your job then. That's even worse than being voted off. You resign because why? Why did you resign? Okay, so what do I, What makes Let us me think, respond to that why does the people feel Let that you're going to, to come into office? And what's this say that you won't resign again then? It is so clear. And I really shouldn't be having this conversation with you because you're so ill-informed.